Is it with? Okay. Got it. Yep. Welcome everyone. Welcome to the Value Working Group meeting for June second. Uh, please add yourself in the minutes. So we have the new. We have to add a new. <laughs> yes. Uh, sorry, my Google is not working. So I'll maybe I am just passive in talking and not in writing. So. First item on the agenda was like a revision of old metrics and Kevin was supposed to bring a list. I don't know. Uh, I don't see any issues created in the value. So maybe he has not done it or he, he didn't get the time to. Looking at. Uh, no, so he'll he'll might he'll might post it for the next meeting and then we can review those uh, old metrics. So, yep. uh, anything on that old metric? Uh, Anything anyone wants to add, or we can move to the another agenda item. So mine, I just put a, I dropped a thing in there. I'll share my screen. Okay. <laughs> so um, basically, for the metrics that are being that are going back under review, all that we're doing is when the review is done so let's say that sean proposes some changes to a metric i might yeah, no, we no, go no. ahead and we make those changes and we consider the revision done and then there's another metric that goes through the same thing and another one and another you know say we have six metrics that are being revised what we're going to do is just open one issue in the translations repository okay. for everything you, here are all of the metrics that have been revised. Okay. So, Sean, could you also kind of like note that for evolution yeah. as well? Yeah, we're just getting to the revision process, but Elizabeth, I guess. <laughs> okay, yeah. Well, okay, so it's just one issue for all the changes. So, we would put that issue in at the completion of a set of changes, not for each change, right? You are correct. So you will put one issue yeah. in. Yeah, we'll okay. remember that from DEI yesterday. That's a good X, X number of revisions. Yeah, that's a good direction for the working groups. We should bring that up in the weekly meeting, Elizabeth, I think. Yeah, we can. And then if if there's a metric that has major changes to it, you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. it's under the wrong template yeah. or it's just, I don't know, it makes no sense and it has to basically be rewritten then right. open a single issue for that metric because it's basically a new review right okay i think the the main criteria for that is if the definition has, of the metric has changed in some substantial way or the way we understand the metric has yeah. changed in some substantial way so this also made me realize <laughs> We, um, hold on. Um, we need to get the handbook, like, problem solved. So, tell me what specifically you mean. Uh, we can't really update the handbook. Did you see my note in Slack? I don't know. Apparently. Not. So I made a, after the web meeting last week, I just went in and created a read the docs.io version of our handbook. Oh, no, I and, can you share that? I, yeah, I've got a pull request in for it. Let me get to my browser here. Um, let's see. This kind of stuff that just needs to get into the handbook. 
Uh, well, we, we can create those documents in the community repo. Uh, and then the, the handbook would basically just organize those documents where they need to be. We can also add this. We have an issue in the community repo of docs that need to be added or changed eventually somewhere along the line. So we could add this list and then check that off as they have been created so it doesn't get lost and buried in these minutes if you want. Uh -huh. Yes. So what sounds like we have like three options here. <laughs> one is read the docs. One is what you had suggested, Kevin. And I don't know if that's the same as what you're it saying. Is, it's best. exactly the same as what Elizabeth was suggesting. Okay. So we have two options. Is that right? Yeah, I just um, mentioned an intermediate step so that in the process of us creating those docs, we don't lose this list. I see. Okay. So what I did with the community handbook in its current form is I just published it um, to read the docs.io with a little jiggering. And I can make it a little bit nicer than it is, but it basically has all the headings. And I can share my screen, but I just put the link in chat as well. All the headings from the handbook are there. And actually, if you click on project name community handbook on the left, you'll see them in the drop down. You'll see them in the left nav as well. I just have to get that to pop up. But it puts uh, all of the all the handbook content into read the docs format. Where is it? Where is it pulling the uh, content from? The handbook in the in the community handbook repo. The, re the repo. OK, yeah, it's everything. It's just basically whatever's in the repo right now is what gets published. So it reads all of the the markdown and whatnot. And I have a PR in for the community handbook under the under the community handbook repo, which is not community, it's somewhere else. I think it's called community handbook, isn't it? It is. Yeah. So there's a PR in there to if if people think this works then we could update the handbook and publish it to read the docs and i would just create a chaos version so it might be like chaos handbook or something so it, i think it should be chaos community handbook as we have the it's much longer url but sure yeah. well so I, I guess i guess the question on my end is uh is would we maintain this as a second handbook or are you proposing I that, the, that the selection. people doing the uh, design work on the, the handbook do uh, uh, this method rather than the uh, the knowledge base uh, my, project that we have planned? Yeah, my, my Slack message was pretty specific that this is a patch. This is like a, a way of hacking so that we can publish an updated version of the handbook as we're developing the website content. And this would provide the opportunity for us to be updating the content in the handbook while the web project is going on, which means that the web project wouldn't be 100% solely responsible for updating the content. And then at some point in time, you know, that project will put it under however you want to deploy it. Like, it so I don't. By, it'll be yeah. By the, okay. Yeah. I, my only concern is that we're not duplicating work, uh, but okay. since since this is being pulled from a repo, mm -hmm. I I think we can we can manage it so that we're not duplicating work if we're so that new documents can be created in the uh, in that existing handbook and and moved into the new structure of the uh, community repo if that is if that's the plan right Elizabeth. Yeah. Is, yeah. There's no intentionality or. I do not want actually the read the docs thing to be permanent. It's just a, a patch so that we can publish changes to our handbook, update the content of our handbook. And I think that'll ultimately help the web project because you won't feel responsible for updating all of the content in the course of doing your work. So, so maybe, maybe uh, sorry, go ahead. No, uh, I'm just trying to understand, do uh, we are having a separate handbook or we are having a community thing? Uh, like, I'm confused. How many things are we having? We have a this is, people. We so have a... This is exactly the same content as what is published in the handbook, plus any changes that have been made to the repo. Okay. So the cha whatever changes we've made to the repo are reflected in the read the docs. 
and they can't be reflected in the current handbook. Okay. So this is a patch for making the contents of the repo visible in a more easily navigable way while the web project is going on so that we don't have like a three, three months of sitting here wishing we could update the handbook. Okay. Yeah. So uh, from a, from like a work standpoint, I suggest that we use that existing community repo as the place to create new documents. The community handbook repo or the community repo? The community handbook repo. So the, the final, <laughs> so the final repo, I think, as we've been discussing it so far, is going to be the community repo. But right now, I'm proposing, since you have this set up, let's create all new documents that need to be created in that community handbook repo. And then we can move those documents as needed into the community repo as we're building out that that finalized version of the handbook. Uh, there is uh, another there is another possibility, which is we could just so what the way that read the docs works is it relies on their, the existence of a docs directory. And so if you look at my pull request into community handbook i've moved everything content wise under a docs directory. You could put that we could just drop that doc docs directory into the community repo and be building the the handbook out of the community repo if that's what your preference is it's literally the difference is a drag and drop. I don't could, I don't really have a preference uh, maybe the yeah, maybe the I Google do. summer of docs students do. I would have a pre if the goal is to get rid of the community handbook repo ultimately. And just mm -hmm. work out of the community repo. Let's just move now. We could do that. Just be done. You know what I, I mean? mean? I can do that in five minutes while we're sitting here. And I, bet you PR. I bet you can do it in four. <laughs> well, I think one of the, uh, the clone. One of the tasks with the uh, with the community repo is is figuring out what the uh, uh, the chapters of the handbook are, if you will, or the the folders and file structure. So. Mm -hmm. The, the existing folder file structure that we have for the community handbook may not match with the, uh, the structure that uh, that the, uh, the students build for the uh, uh, the new handbook. So I'm, I'm wondering if they're better off working on a blank slate or moving it in like you're suggesting and uh, and modifying it. Well, if you if you pull it in, um, it's just another directory that in a repo that already exists, and the content can be updated, reorganized, and we can just continue to update according to the reorganization until you're ready to launch. Yeah, when you're when you're modifying existing content, you often make design decisions based on mm -hmm. that existing content. Mm -hmm. if, if we start from a blank slate, we're we're asking them to reimagine what that organization would look like. You can and do you can, you can get different results when you do that. That's that's just my thought. But you're still going to need the content. So organizing it differently is totally cool. Right. And that, that's why that's why I'm saying building that content in one place uh, and then organizing it in that in that second place may be a, it may be a way to manage it. And once again, I, so you I think the preference person. should be with the people who are doing the work, but uh, uh, which is not me. So, but you do have a preference, Kevin. Your preference is to keep it in the community handbook repo. That seems to be where you're going. It's pulling from there now. We might as well just leave it. And uh, when we when they build the knowledge base, they're going to pull from documents that are in community. They're going to pull from documents that are in that existing community handbook. Okay, so you're gonna have, have to go to each of the individual repos and find documentation there as well. You had earlier said you didn't have a preference, but you do have a preference. Uh, I mean, if it, a preference in that if the if the if you make a different decision other than what I'm uh, what I'm suggesting, I'm not going to be it won't bother me terribly. Uh, But I would say keeping it as simple as possible would be is is kind of my preference, and and as simple as possible is leaving it, leaving it exactly the way Sean has created it initially, All right? So he connected it to the community handbook, so we just leave that community handbook running, 
And if we need to create new content, we can drop it in there and then the. And, and then have read the docs slurp it up and spit it out. And then the new community handbook can can pull the content in as they need it. Okay, so I, I feel I'm like so I'm confused. Going back and forth. I'm so confused right now. So uh, the preference is to keep it as is, Kevin. I'm just trying to follow. Like, like you seem to have a preference, but then you're like, I don't have a preference. So do you, is the preference to keep it? But so maybe. Uh, maybe we, we can ask Elizabeth that question first, since she's the, the lead mentor on that. Um, Way to pass it, dude. <laughs> I, 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 I agree with, I, well, okay, to be honest, first I agreed with Sean, and then I agreed with Kevin, so I could be persuaded. Uh, I think really, ultimately, as Kevin said, it should be up to the people doing the work. Um, so I don't, I, I think we should just maybe defer that bigger conversation to that group. And um, cause that doesn't really have a ton to do with value working group, to be honest. So maybe we could um, defer to them to see what they want to do with it. Uh, can anyone open the value tab in the screen who is sharing? Uh, uh, yep. So I've posted four things. I'm trying to comprehend. We have community repo, we have community handbook repo that we want to get rid of. We have a knowledge base, we have read dogs. Is it right? Am I understanding it correctly? Uh, I made a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> See, so that, so I'm Docs, is, to Docs now is in the community handbook, in the community fold, in the community repo. I can take it out, but <laughs> I so, thought I'd created a new branch in community, but I created a new branch in community handbook, and then I pushed it to community right to the main branch and so, went around the whole pull request thing because why would I want to do that? Um, let's let's just leave it the way it is and, and we'll let the uh, the Google Center of Docs student code students uh, figure out how they want to do it. Okay. Well, for now, I'm just going to build the community handbook out of the community repo on readthedocs.io. And I think I'll call it chaos handbook. It's just a shorter URL. The text will say chaos community handbook, but. I am lost in that, so I don't know. It's, uh, so... Yes, Vinod, those, those four places that you described are four places that currently exist, or okay. actually the, the knowledge base doesn't currently exist. Okay. Uh, however, those are the four things we are talking about, and two of those things are going to go away. And I'll, I'll let you guess which two. Uh, this will knowledge base will come in future, uh, and we will get rid of uh, community handbook repo, right? Yes, and and read the docs. So the the knowledge base will replace read the docs. Okay. And the and the handbook. And the community repo will replace the uh, community handbook repo. Okay. Okay, so knowledge base will uh, replace read dogs. Okay, and community repo will replace. Okay. I'm going to add this to the web content meeting agenda. Okay. Because I, I think that's where the that's where the Google Summer of Docs students are meeting, right? Yes. Okay. It's like the only thing I can say with a definitive yes to. <laughs> so I don't I don't know about other rest of this stuff. It's very confusing. So I've made this okay. We'll have a community repo and knowledge base. Community handbook will be replaced by community repo, and read docs will be replaced by knowledge base. So we'll have two things in future. Enoch, I hope this isn't too exciting for you. I mean, it's it's really you know. Yeah, I don't know how we feeling got part of our discussions this. you could sit in on for your first meeting. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So are we good on that? Should we move to the other item? 
I'd, I'd like to talk about this for 10 more minutes. <laughs> God. <laughs> Just kill me. <laughs> so, I can give you one more minute to wrap it up, maybe. I was just joking. <laughs> okay. So next item is working groups async during the two week period. I don't know who has. Uh, maybe anyone who has added this can add. I put this. So it's just work groups overall. Like I feel like some work groups meet every two weeks and that's it. Okay. We just, we just do work in this hour. Okay. And I mean, we have so many different tools and ways to get work done. It's not like we have to work like constantly between two weeks or constantly between the weeks, but I just feel like some of the working groups like oh, we just appear and we don't have like, or the agenda is like, what do you want to talk about? <laughs> like, so maybe create a Slack channel for the working groups. Well, it's but, more than that. Like we have to, it's more than just like creating channels. It's, it's about how we kind of track work. Assign action items. Over the course of the two weeks. And like, hopefully they, it'd be like, it'd be cool. Like if an action item got done, like within the next four days that left okay. a meeting. So like, how do we, how do we encourage that? And I'm not sure. So it's not just for value. This is right. kind of on all. This is just for people to think about. And maybe it's nothing. Maybe it's maybe there's nothing to be done. Uh, one thought that comes to me is like, I've seen a lot of working group communicating through Slack for ongoing work. So that can be a one option maybe, or like if we have any action items uh, that we can follow up on, I, I don't know. Yeah, I, I do, people have, cause I don't wanna ask like you, Vinod, or whoever's doing the DEI, like to be other people's time manager, you know, like to ping whomever and say, hey, have you had a chance to take a look at that? Because that's not really productive. Stephen, I saw right. you unmuted. I don't know if you had thoughts. Um, I'm mostly muted because they're collecting garbage outside of my oh, house. Oh, all right. <laughs> it is background noise. Um, do I have thoughts? Um, yeah, I am. Um, there's so many different ways to do task lists and scheduling and, and having people um, take stuff and assign stuff that it's really, I, I agree with you that having some system is helpful, which system works for most people, especially since you know, as I think we somewhat demonstrated today in our intense discussion of pushes, pulls, and, and, you know, I really, my own personal preference is I hate using Git for docs. You know, it's just, we have so many, you know, why we're not using Google Docs or something similar. When I say we, I mean the entire open source planet, right? You know, Git Google Docs aren't open source. For, for, yeah, yeah, for open source, like it wasn't created for for ease of shared document editing, right? It's, it's you, you have to approve code in a different way than you have to approve a doc, right? You know, so it's it's it all, has always seemed way more convoluted as a way to work on docs. But the open source world, many folks are still married to doing everything and get and I get it, but it drives me nuts. And that is my personal sandbox for the day in terms of, you know, setting up online Gantt charts or, or you know, I'll own this, I'll own that. Git is one way to do it and there's project boards in Git where we could do it, but I, I don't know if that's the 
the easiest on-ramp to doing that stuff. So I don't think I don't think I really have an answer for you, Matt. I think again, though I don't want to do one of these leave it up to the people doing work discussions. It's maybe something that we need to think about and come back to in terms of how to do that. Yeah, and maybe it's just food for thought for everybody. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Matt is, I'm sorry, but I didn't mean to interrupt you. <clears throat> Matt, is the concern that the velocity of the working groups is not fast enough? Or like, what, I'm just curious where that comes from. So I, I just feel like sometimes <laughs> the, and, and maybe different working groups are different, but like we, when there's a two week window and people leave with action items like i understand that sometimes they just can't get done but sometimes i also feel like like we hit the meeting this meeting the the sync meeting and we're like oh we can do that right now and, and maybe the the synchronous meeting is the time to get the work done but two weeks can be a long time sometimes um mm -hmm. so that's that's the concern i don't know if that it's not like a dire concern. It's just. It... Yeah, I, I don't think this is a I don't think this is a discussion about how we can track the work. I think this is a discussion about changing the expectations around action items and what we can and what we can realistically uh, expect from volunteer uh, contributors uh, for the most part. Yeah, and I'm sure you're right. I'm not, I'm certainly not proposing like like tracking people down during the week and being like, "You said you were going to do this. This needs to be done." Like that's not that's nowhere close to what I'm doing. And I'm also not asking for people who run the meetings to all of a sudden put together like project tracking boards and keep track that way. Um, maybe maybe when action items are assigned, we also ask the question. How soon can you have this done? So that the uh, the person that takes the action item also mm -hmm. assigns a deadline. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's yeah. I think that would be helpful. Yep. I mean, we could always like. Oh, go ahead, Elizabeth. No, I was just going to say my my deadline will always be two weeks. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'll have it done by next week. Six months. <laughs> Put me down. I mean, for, me, always... for me, it often uh, for me it often depends on how many action items I pick up in other working groups as well. Uh, well, yeah, and that's the thing. Like you know, a lot of us go to multiple working groups, so we have multiple yeah. action items. So it's like, oh, yeah, it adds uh, up. Yeah. Even with me, this has happened. Okay, this meeting is coming now. I have two days. Let me see what action item I have, and then I'll try to finish those before the meeting. So different people have different styles. So. And like most open source projects, I, I would guess that the majority of the action items that are being done are being done by a few people. Uh, but I would go back to the my initial comment. Maybe we just ask the person who picks up the action item to, to set their own deadline on it. That way, there's some expectation that it will be done based on what they've said. You know, maybe my, it's not really a concern. Like my thoughts are like a lot of open source work is done asynchronously and we're, we're a pretty synchronous heavy community. We yeah. rely on, on zoom. And I don't know if that was a function of like just everybody being on zoom during Corona, you know, during COVID and it was a natural way to go. So I, again, I don't think this is a bad thing. I just, we are, we seem to be synchronous heavy yeah the fault i think I, the the synchronous does build community it does i'm certainly not complaining <laughs> i'm not i don't have like criticism yeah 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 i know yeah i hear what you're saying though i mean i'm in a lot of chaos meetings every week <laughs> yeah so this sounds like a uh a bigger issue than um about shifting maybe to more in the middle of because you know, a lot of people can't make these meetings and I always feel bad mm -hmm. that when they can't, but they want to. 
So maybe incorporating Slack, like maybe after meetings, we just like maybe copy the minutes and put them in Slack or, you know, like, here's what we talked about today for those who missed it, you know, whatever, just so that people, it's more like front and center. Cause I know like when I feel, when I miss a meeting, I feel completely lost, even though the recordings there, the minutes are there. I still don't feel like I really know what happened for whatever reason. So I don't know, just a thought of like, like including Slack in yeah, yeah. incorporating it more into this meeting or like bridging the two better what about like if our meetings are 50 minutes five zero minutes i don't know what other people who are at the meetings would think of this but like we spend we we actually end at 45 not end but like we spend the last five minutes creating a summary of what we've talked about just the highlights here are the topics that were talked about in today's value meeting, or here are the highlights that were talked about today. Like we spend 10 or not 10, but five minutes as a group still, still on Zoom. And then that's the list we can cut and paste into Slack. Slack. Yep. Cause even sometimes dropping all minutes could be a little confusing. Like if yeah, I, like, yeah. Maybe, maybe a bullet point, like three bullet points or four bullet points in the Slack. So it'd be like we'd spend five minutes summary of value on June 2. And we just have like whatever, yep. like handbook. Things like this. We just spend five minutes and then whoever ran the meeting yep. can just copy and paste that into Slack. <laughs> just. I think it's certainly worth a try and see if that kind of helps keep the conversation going in Slack and continuing it. Cause I think that was your original kind of thing is like, it just kind of drops off. Mm -hmm. Like there's no interaction between now and next week. And we have no, like, I don't know. Yeah. I would like to hear like if other people think that this is a good idea. I, I like the idea personally. Yeah, we can give it a try. So uh, with with this, we don't have a Slack channel for the value. We will create a Slack channel and I'll post uh, today's summary and see how community responds. Well, maybe maybe just do it in general. I mean, call yeah. the Slack channel work WG dash value. Okay. My suggestion because then we know it's okay. This is focused on the working group. Okay. Wouldn't wouldn't it be better to wouldn't it be better to post that in the general? Yeah, I agree. It would be okay. a really it's a really short like it's only it would only be like three points. Okay. So it'll be like update from value working group, update from this group in the journal, so that like those who are not in the community uh, like everywhere uh, in the journal can have the sense of what is happening. I mean, I guess I would, if you've got like six working groups right now, if they're all posting in the general channel, I think it'll be hard to facilitate working group conversations asynchronously through Slack. And if we want to move to discourse anyway, maybe this should be something we try to launch in discourse instead of putting it in Slack and then moving it to discourse. This would fit better in discourse for sure. Uh, I guess the, the question is, is the is the purpose of this to update everyone in the community or is the purpose to just update people who are uh, specifically following value or uh, but I, I, I think that's completely I think the, the discourse comment is completely true. This would work much better in discourse. I would like to update everybody in the community, especially if it was short. I don't know, Sean, you had a concern that it would create too much noise on the general channel. Well, I guess I'm question. I'm, so what I heard is that the purpose of this is to try to move working group activity to an asynchronous mode. And I think that's difficult to do if all the working groups are communicating in the same channel, because then it gets really hard to tease apart, like which messages are for which working group. So there was another issue uh, that Elizabeth uh, identified and, and one that one that I've kind of seen as well, and that is that uh, 
as we've as we've moved on, a lot of our work has kind of become siloed, right? So if you if you don't if you miss a meeting, you kind of don't know what's going on, right? So uh, and 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 a lot of people are unable to attend all of the meetings or uh, the meeting that they want to go to every week or every other week. So when you when you miss that when you miss those those synchronous meetings, you're at a, a considerable disadvantage. Uh, so, Wait. so one way to reduce that silo would be to take these and push them out, out to general. And so Sean, what do you or Sean, Kevin, what do you think of this? Like if if that went out as an example onto the general so that's a that's a useful update to the general channel but I, what i heard earlier is that we wanted to move some of the work of the working groups to an asynchronous mode which is different than posting an update to the general channel okay well maybe i do like that you added please join us in the wg value slack channel to learn more like here's the update continue the conversation over there is that yeah. that was your point right matt yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Maybe that would help. I don't know, Sean. We think that makes sense. Yeah. And then, uh, especially if that WG value Slack channel exists. And then my my only question is, if we're going to start this now, um, how close are we to the discourse environment being up? Because this would be a that would be a better place. Or I guess it's just fine It'll, if we just move it over to discourse when that's ready. I don't think that's a big deal. Like this could just say really. just join us on the discourse. Yeah, well, if that's like, I don't know how close we are to launching that. I haven't honestly looked at that Slack channel in a few weeks. So, I think we're thinking to wait oh, like six months or so. Was that was my suggestion anyway? But um, okay. just because we have so much other stuff going on right now, it's that's like one more thing to coordinate. Yeah. Okay. Then let's just create a WV value, WG value Slack channel, and move ahead. I, I have just created it. I'm going to add the people so well and if, if matt pastes a link to the slack channel in this message or you paste it whoever writes the message and um, yep. that will essentially invite the whole community to look in that okay. channel i'll do at the end of the meeting we and have then, one yeah we have one more agenda that needs to be covered before so, we dismiss yeah. I will say so the I will say this adding another adding another slack channel adds another place that people have to go and and look for look for stuff right so it yes continues this this process of creating silos in our community so if if um, and I'm not saying we don't have we don't do it I'm just saying please consider it we could um, create working group links at the top of the general channel I mean working groups are a significant center of where our work gets done and if the objective is to move some of this working group work into an asynchronous mode, making those working group channels linked at the top of the general channel would make it easier for to point people to how you get involved in a working group in case they miss this message that we send out. Though it'll be harder and harder if we provide short updates in the general channel every week we meet. It'll be harder, what'll be harder? No, it'll be easier. Did I say harder? It, like as as we okay. post, as yeah. each, yeah. So hiding it. Kevin's concern was hiding it in all these different channels, and I was like, well, working groups are the center of most of our activities, so it would be reasonable to put link buttons at the top of the Slack channel for ge the general Slack channel for each working group. Probably as abbreviated of a name as possible. Okay. And to your to your point, Sean, to try to encourage async conversation, mm -hmm. like maybe this is like a first, just a first step, <laughs> like it's just a, a, it's a ma minor nudge. Yes, like let's just try to get that back out to folks. And yeah, if we demonstrate it through practice, it'll be adopted faster than if we declare it. So I know we have one more item, but what would people think about within their working group spending the last five minutes to create this list every time they have a meeting. It would make the meetings five minutes shorter or three minutes or whatever. I think it's a good idea. 
let's try it for a couple of meetings see how sure. we get the feedback and then we can stop it or continue it as any point in time so maybe last item in the agenda is cure session for ospology i think steven you have kept this so maybe yeah can... so we've been in, in the to do group we've been talking about you know ospology sessions for those who don't know what those are those are monthly kind of um presentations about a certain aspect of working in open source run by the to do group out of the linux foundation the to do group is a, a conglomeration of a bunch of open source officers experienced open source people and what i uh in ex and what i i termed in our working group meeting yesterday as the ospo curious which became very <laughs> popular as a term so um sure it did uh so you know one of the possibilities of content for an ospology session would be metrics and analytics indirectly or chaos directly and the link in that document is the way you do a pull request to suggest you want to be a part of a session if that's something you folks want to do then you should do that um click on the link because i'm i'm not a hundred percent sure that it's accessible by people who are not it's on my screen right now okay so you can actually edit it wow yes so i, I put there. forth an opportunity to you folks to pick as you want it could be as early as next month in july i think we've opted not to do in august so you could do july or you could do sometime in the fall whatever works for you you say it's once a month yeah okay what time is it um, about time how dare you expect me to know day and time Matt? it's very selfish of you it's it's generally the first week of the month and i think it's at 11. um give me a minute and i'll actually look it up i'm surprised it doesn't say on the form it probably should oh uh, the github repo is not going to tell me all right well i put it approximately what you think it might be That one can't be right. So is it a paper submission or a presentation? Like uh, the issue is calling for the papers. She terms it is papers but it's really just uh, a presentation it's uh, okay. a 20 minute presentation q a okay and i will have to look back and see what day what day of the month and time it is Why would we make that hard to find? Because we're idiots. Oh. All right, I'll get in the Slack. Oh, great. Services temporarily unavailable in Slack. That's helpful. All right, I'll get, I will. I will follow up. I, nobody needs to see you watch. Watch me search around for when we do these things. Um, I will ping Anna while we wrap up the rest of the stuff. So yeah, we are at the end of the minute and at the end of the agenda. So we can continue. Thank you, everyone. Continue uh, the discussion asynchronously in Slack. <laughs> yes. Well done, Sean. You learned. Sure. <laughs> I can learn. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye.